G'day, Steve Morgan here from Fishing Monthly Magazines and Australian Bass Tournaments, and I've just come off uh, one of the greatest brim fishing years of my career, 2018, where I won the 2018 uh, Brim Angler of the Year. Now, of course, ABT's motto is who shares wins, uh, and I had a bit of an idea over the holidays. I thought, why don't I show you all of the baits that I used through 2018 to put every single fish in my live well. There was around uh, between 10 and 15 baits here in all and because I ran the camera all year we've got the opportunity to not only show you what the baits are but how to fish them as well. So uh, the the article I've put together, it's an article here I've put together for the uh, the tournament angler guide in 2019 which will come out in the February fishing monthly magazines. Um, and what I suppose it proves is it's called, uh, it's called you need to be a versatile brimmer. Um, AOY wasn't easy for me this year, I only just beat Cam Whittam, but um, despite what you may see on the live streams and hear around the traps, the lure I caught my most fish on this year was a cranker crab. And it wasn't nearly all my fish on the cranker crab, it was only 40% of my weigh-in fish came on an olive cranker crab. 60% of my fish came on something else. So uh, what we're going to do in this video is it's a reasonably long video. It's going to take you through all of those baits from top to bottom. Uh, what are they? How do you fish them? And where do you fish them? And it might help you become a better brimmer this coming season. Now, I think the best way to do this is probably from the top of the water column right down to the bottom of the water column. So we're going to start uh, with one of the lures I used in one of the later qualifiers in the year. In fact, the last qualifier of the year. This is the Imikatsu Dilemma Popper. Um, I didn't fish top water much for the rest of the year, a little bit in the Australian Open with the bent minnow, but this dilemma popper caught me plenty of fish on the first day at Southwest Rocks. You can see in the cutaway here, uh, the way I fish that top water, make a cast with it, walk the dog with that, uh, with that top water. It's got a really small little cut face on it, so you can pop it a little bit, but it's really a walk the dog lure and plenty of pauses because that's when the brim and at Southwest Rocks, the bass were really, uh, were really biting it. The next day at Southwest Rocks, uh, the dilemma was a little bit noisy. I had to go to this. This is the TMCO Red Pepper Micro. This one's been a bit beat up. It's got some Atomic Trick Bits assist hooks on there, but the Eco Gear ones for the ZX one work just as well. Um, this is a really skinny, slender, uh, finesse top water bait that I often use on the Gold Coast canals when the fish aren't biting really well. You fish it exactly the same as the Dilemma, except you fish it even slower and with longer pauses. And when the fish are only just coming up and sort of sucking and nipping at the bait, that's when they get caught on these assist hooks. Um, if the fish are really belting prawns, go for something more noisy. But if you want finesse, try this, the little TMK Red Pepper Micro. The third one we're going to look at, and uh, I think every brewer in Australia has got one of these in their box. This is the uh, the OSP 76 millimeter bent minnow, and it's in my favourite colour here, which is a pearl white colour. Um, it's been really good to me in the Australian Open over the years, but basically any time when the prawn's running, when the water is over 20 degrees Celsius and the water's clear, and especially if there's a little bit of wind on the water, I love throwing these bent minnows. Um, I fish them really erratically at the start um, and then slow them down and twitch them. Blake O'Grady calls it the Parkinson's Retriever. I'm just sort of shaking it across the top and then stop it as the brim are going to come up to bite it. Uh, if you get more than one fish coming up at a bent minnow, you know they're going to fight over it and you know one of them is going to get hooked up. Importantly for me, I like these original hooks on here. They're a really thin, fine, nickel plated uh, hook. Um, they don't stand up to a lot of pressure, um, so be careful when you take them out of the fish's mouth and you'll find you'll get quite a long life out of those hooks. They keep the lure really buoyant and they keep it up on the surface so that the brim's got to pull it under to see what's going on. So a bent minnow in your box. Um, I fish it with quite heavy braid and leader. Nothing wrong with fishing this on 10 pound braid and 6, 8 or 10 pound leader because I know how dear they are. You don't want to lose them and they're not too line shy when they're on the bent minnows. For me in the shallow jerkbait department this year, the, uh, the Duo Realis uh, 80 SP was my favourite and there's a couple of examples here. I lost the colour I was using in Tassie which you're going to see in these cutaways. But uh, an early morning bite in the Derwent River up over the rocks with these little shallow jerkbaits. It could be a uh, Daiwa Presso Minnow. This year it was the Duo. Um, it's one of the greatest things in brimming. Twitch, twitch, 
and have that big fish jump on. These fish with that small bib, they only dive to around maybe a foot or two. And you can fish them over the top of those muscles when the tide's in and over those, uh, those rocky edges when the fish are up shallow, especially early in the morning or high tide is the best for these. So a couple of those in your box will be nice indeed. Now, Adam from fishing.com.au, mate, you are responsible for this one. You sent me a few of these and said try them out, especially on the Swansea Flats in Lake Macquarie. You gave them to me for the, uh, for the uh, Brim Grand Final in 2017, and I know all you guys saw was the, uh, the action on the bridges, but this was catching plenty of fish for me on the flats. So I went back to it in 2018 when it was really windy. I don't know if you remember the tournament. It was gale force windy nearly that uh, that day and that clear water on the Swansea Flats uh, yielded me a few fish on this bait including a 37 centimetre fish that we got in the dying moments of the first day. Um, fish like that stick in your memory for a long time. You throw it out on two pounds straight through fluorocarbon and you slow roll it in and you hang on. This is a great little bait that's just been uh, added to my arsenal for this year. Next Slightly deeper, let's go to the dual 50mm shad. This is one I used in the Derwin a bit, but it's been a Gold Coast upgrade lure for me for a while as well. Shiny, chromey colour, just like those blacks like, and it sort of slowly floats or suspends a little bit, depending on how fresh the water is. Rip that thing down with plenty of pauses, and the cutaways here, you can see me using it on the oyster reefs in Marilla Bay in the Derwent, um, and I'm not shy with line on this. I fished this actually on a braid leader combo, because on those oyster reefs, if those fish get back to the oysters and just touch it once, you've lost that bait for good. This one lasted the whole tournament. Interestingly, the, uh, the Derwent was my worst tournament this year. Um, I'm happy any year where a 13th place is my worst finish. I suppose this one here is a lure that all my non-boaters over the years and everyone's caught plenty of fish on, but not me. So I made a bit of an effort this year to throw it a little bit, the uh, Brown Suji Deep Jackal Chubby. Um, and ironically, it provided what I think was the angler of the year fish for me. I caught my last two fish um, on, in the Maclay River at the Southwest Rocks round on this bait. Um, and the last one was uh, a low to mid 30 centimetre fish. So that really sealed up uh, the AOY trophy for me. I threw this on uh, two pounds straight through fluorocarbon on a really versatile broken bones duff rod uh, that I won last year. Um, and I enjoyed what a lot of people have been enjoying for years, um, a good bite on that deep jackal chubby. If we're gonna fish bridges though, this is the bait for me. It's the Atomic uh, Hards Crank 38. It's the deep version and it's in Ghost Gill Brown. That's the lure that I won the grand final on in 2009 and it still produces year after year when I'm crank baiting basically any bridge in the country. You wanna throw it right up beside those pylons. You want it to hit those pylons on the way back and I like to do it bringing it with the current. Now, I can fish these on slightly heavier line on the bridges than I do uh, on the flats. On the flats, I'd probably throw it on the three pound. On the bridges, I'd throw it on four, five, six pound fluorocarbon straight through and hang on. I caught my very first fish on my first cast in the Australian Open both this year in 2018 and last year in 2017, ironically on exactly the same spot on Iron Cove Bridge. You need some of these fellas in your box. A lure that saved me in the Australian Open last year, but put a few key fish for me in the well in the Hawkesbury this year, is this. This is the Tiemco Stick Minnow uh, in 007 colour. Uh, it has still got a set of Tiemco barbless hooks on it. Now there's an Ostackle bait as well, uh, a little Shinku, which is basically the same bait and works just the same, and I interchange both of those baits all of the time. Sometimes the Tiemcos can be pretty hard to get and don't be afraid to swap the os tackle out. This little bait here, you can fish it in a couple of different ways. One, you can make big long casts across the flat on two pounds straight through. You rip, rip, rip it, sink it for through it two or three seconds and then wind and rip, rip, rip that bait again and that sort of ripping retrieve will get the fish biting. But the way I love fishing these the most is when the fish are keyed in on bait fish and prawns and not crabs, they're great for throwing at moored boats and structure in clear water and especially in pit water in, uh, in Sydney and New South Wales. This little bait has yielded many, many fish for me over the years in those clear water situations. Fishes just as well in winter time as it does in summer. That's my hard body selection, I suppose, that I got away with for the year. And I suppose if I was real brave, I'd just take those baits with me. But there are another few hard bodies I'll show you later on that I think should be part of your kit. Soft plastic wise, I did catch a couple of key fish at St. Helens on these. These are, of course, are the, uh, are the pink grubs. 
the uh, Eco Gear uh, grass will be no medium size in Okiyami colour. Okiyami is that pink colour that glows in the dark. If I turn the lights out here, you'll see these little things glowing in the dark. Uh, Takeyoshi Orimoto uh, and I worked on this technique early. Um, we've worked through every colour in the range. This glow in the dark colour seems to work better than most. You burn it across the top really quickly. You'll see it in the cutaways here. Burn it across the top. When something's looking at it, stop it. Let it come over and eat it. And then set the hook hard. I fish both this and the next one, the uh, the Eco Gear Aqua, on this uh, the Magic Beak number one Van Fook hook. They're available uh, in Australia through EJ Todds as a distributor, and they fit this grass minnow and my next bait, this uh, the Eco Gear Aqua 50 mil salt and pepper uh, brim prawn. They fit it perfectly. That hook fits it great from head end, from the tail end. You can use it about four times with four fish these baits and get away with it. Um, this Eco Gear Aqua is great for either skipping along the surface and then burn and killing, or as I love fishing it the most, throwing them at pontoons and have that slowly sinking bait come and get engulfed by a brim. It's real sight fishing, uh, it's real skip casting, and it's real close to structure. Um, I love the Aquas. They're cheap if you get busted off on them, but the brims swim over to them and they basically can't resist them. Um, I always turn to Z-Man grubs when my non-boaters start schooling me on them, and this is an example of one that uh, Stewie Walker schooled me on down in St Helens in Tasmania, throwing on the flats beside the racks. Um, Stewie gets this gudgeon-coloured grub and he mates it and with the, uh, the motor oil colour, puts some grubs in together, leaves it in there a few weeks and those colours sort of mix. I'm not that technical, I only get a mated grub when I'm fishing on the boat with Stewie. But these, um, these little Z-Man grubs on either a uh, 1 16th or a 1 12th or a 1 24th jig head uh, really do produce the goods for a lot of people in the country. Uh, as I say, it's in Helens, this thing did real well for me. And it's little brother, the Slim Swim in motor oil with that tiny little hook. Check out the size of that little number four hook and that uh, 1 24th or a 1 32 ounce jig head in there. That did it for me at Mandurah. Mandurah was the only event with the year I didn't catch my full limit of 10 out of 10, but I wasn't too happy because I came first in it. And I caught every single fish on a uh, seven foot eight Daiwa crab rod, four pounds straight through fluorocarbon, and this bait here. Um, throwing it beside the pylons, beside the jetties, and just dead sinking it. Every single fish would eat that bait on the drop, and I think that light head was a bit of the secret to the success over there. When I did my stats this year though, this is the bait that I caught 40% of my fish on. It's the Cranker Crab, it's olive, it's heavy, it's hard to get when they sell out. Uh, but if you can stock up on a few of these guys, these guys basically will work around every rocky bridge pile on, bit of structure and current filled bottom reef in the country. Um, Steersy, you've done fantastically making these, uh, these Cranker Crabs. And one of the tricks I've learned off Jamie McEwen this year is if you haven't got a heavy olive crab and you want a heavy olive crab, get one of your other colours and hit it with some uh, Tamiya model paint. Um, and you don't have to be complicated with it. You just get it and you spray it on a bit of cardboard. And you can turn your uh, the colours that might be your favourite into an olive and that colour works just as well. Um, these crabs, one of the revelations for me this year, and I didn't fish crabs for the first few years when they came out. I thought I didn't need to. I really hurt myself when I didn't fish them is that you can fish these in heavy structure on quite heavy line. I've been using an eight pound suffix fluorocarbon, which doesn't have much memory, casts pretty well, and man, can it pull the brutes out of some evil country with this. This is the 5.9 gram olive cranker crab, and it is probably one of the number one lures that you need in your lure box. I caught 40% of my weigh-in fish on that this year. Couple more tips. Um, one leader I've really fell in love with, it's the Yamatoyo Chinu Harris. Um, it's got a brim on the front, it's a green packet, it comes in a little plastic pack and I write the, the strength on it so because I don't understand what the uh, what the, the little like PE ratings mean on it. Um, but three, four, five, six, up to ten pound line, this comes in. I found this extremely abrasion resistant, nearly invisible. I rarely lose fish due to broken leaders on this stuff. And one more thing that uh, I think is going to play a big role for me in 2019 is this. This is the Jackal Sierra Minnow. It has no action at all. It's just a little chromey, straight swimming jerkbait. Swims just under the surface on straight through fluorocarbon. And uh, 
I've caught some pretty good brim on, on this over the years. Not necessarily in the grand final, which I absolutely shanked last year. I was fishing summer patterns and the fish weren't quite into them yet. But I'm really looking forward to giving this guy and some of his mates a go when the uh, ABT Tour hits Victoria in early 2019. Now this article about all of these baits, or all the pictures, etc., are in the ABT Tournament Angler Guide 2019. It comes out with every single fishing monthly magazine nationwide. That's Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tassie, and Western Australia. Uh, all of the information, uh, how to enter the tournaments, all of that sort of stuff is in there. We'd love to see you at an ABT event in 2019. www.abt.org.au